As part of this research project, we asked participants, what effect has the middle school movement had on American education? Their responses covered a wide range of influences. Perhaps the most obvious influence they reported was that the middle school has changed the structure and continuum of American schools and schooling from a two-tiered system of elementary and secondary, which included a junior and senior high school, to a three-tiered system of elementary, middle, and high school. Gatewood characterized this as middle school's greatest contribution to American education. I believe the greatest <laughs> contribution uh, the middle school uh, has made to American education is legitimizing an organization in the middle uh, that's, that's truly unique. I think despite all the controversy that continues to swirl about middle schools, whether they should exist, what they should be, I don't think there's any question now that uh, middle school is part of the educational firmament. I think it's clearly established. Um, we hear uh, uh, every community or every state has, has middle schools. Uh, you look at the media, its use of middle school. Uh, you know, that, that name that Bill Alexander uh, used that he, he, he brought out of England. Um, it was such a, an odd name at the time. Uh, it's just universally accepted now. So I think um, the public has accepted middle school as a school as an organization. I think there's a general feeling that it needs to be different from an elementary, different from a high school, that it's a necessary entity. Arth agreed that this was a very significant positive development. We use the term middle school now and it stands for something. It stands for a different program. He described this recognition of middle school as a unique institution as a fantastic breakthrough Lounsbury concurred. We've remade the face of American education, no question about it. Middle school is now seen and heard everywhere. John Swaim stated, People now know what a middle school is, or at least recognize it as the structure in the K-12 continuum. Arth and John Swaim both commented on the relatively quick life of this transition. For example, John Swaim emphasized, The middle school movement has been one of the most rapidly developing movements that has changed the whole system of American education. Other contributions of the middle school movement to American education included the contribution of middle school education to the organizational structure of schools. Gatewood, for example, suggested that the concept of teaming communities in the middle school continues to be unique. Others commented on the more general approach of middle schools to develop smaller learning communities as mechanisms for providing affiliation for young adolescents and their teachers. Dota and Johnston, for example, noted that the middle school's approach to small learning communities is affecting school reform at the secondary level. There's been a clear invitation to the American high school from the middle school that there needed to be change at the secondary level. And now with the small schools movement and the Gates Foundation's monies devoted to reforming the American high school, um, it's no surprise to me that much of the impetus, uh, you know, could be traced back to the early, the early developments in middle school. And, and then the later invitation to the high school through breaking ranks and other documents to um, rethink the high school model. Interestingly enough, I work now extensively in high school reform initiatives. And I, would, I don't go and announce this, but by and large, most of what is considered to be innovative practice for high school reform has been going on in middle schools for 30 years. Uh, small learning communities, advocates, a, 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 a focused uh, interdisciplinary, hands-on curriculum, uh, lots of uh, real life experiences. Arnold mentioned the importance of smallness and summarized a number of other contributions middle schools have made to American education. Certainly, the middle school movement has caused education to focus more on young adolescents and to take their education more seriously. I think it's had a significant effect on interdisciplinary curriculum development and also on scheduling practices. Its attempts to create smallness out of bigness have influenced the high school house system it has given a big boost to advisories. The camaraderie and the spirit the middle school movement has engendered 
have spillover effects to American education in general. It has clearly affected the lives of the kids, teachers, and professors involved. Another contribution to American education, and perhaps to American society in general, is that the middle school movement has raised awareness of young adolescents as an important and distinct developmental stage. Being stated, We have brought a lot of attention outside of the middle level movement to young adolescents. Let's face it, people know who we are. They know what we stand for. So I think we've definitely impacted American education. In spite of these great contributions to American education, not all news is good. Johnston suggested, Middle schools have been unfairly targeted as the weak link in the system. The institution has never caught the imagination or the commitment of the American people to the extent that it deserves. Perhaps lack of recognition in public policy and federal legislation is partly to blame for the inconsistency between a public acknowledgement in the legitimacy of middle schools and public action to support them. Sue Swain, for example, expressed her disappointment. America's largest single education act is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. The word middle school or middle level isn't in that title, nor is it mentioned anywhere in the law. It appears we only have a two-tier educational system when we have a three-tier system in the vast majority of our country. People in Washington, D.C. will tell you secondary is the term that serves both middle school and high school, but the funding actually designated to middle level doesn't bear that out. Without this recognition, you experience challenges in areas that elementary or high school people do not. Examples not only include difficulty in receiving specific funding for middle-level needs in areas such as reading or science, but the recent discovery that federal research data doesn't support a disaggregation of information for middle-level researchers at all. Without governmental support of middle schools as a critical, unique tier in the American educational system, we will continue to struggle for public support and commitment. John Swaim suggested, Anytime you gain status and you are starting to do pretty well, then people start looking at negative things. I think we are in a period of time that people are looking for what's wrong with middle-level education. This is not all bad. I think we need to look at ourselves and be forced to justify why we're doing what we are doing. The optimists among us may find hope in Swaim's statement. We are doing well. However, optimism without action at this critical time in our history is meaningless. As Swaim suggested, middle-level leaders must rise to the challenges of retrospection and introspection. We must examine our motives, our advocacy, our practices, and our role in American education. We must work collaboratively to rededicate ourselves to present and future generations of young adolescents. Mm -hmm.